Hi, welcome to another video. Some really great new Aider upgrades have dropped, so let's look at them and check them out. Since the last video, two new versions have been launched. The first version after the video was just a simple bug fix that resolved a dependency conflict between Aider Chat and Playwright, which was fine. But the latest major version is the one that's really good. First of all, the key thing it added is a new mode in the tool. This new mode is the architect and editor mode. Let's dive into it in depth, and then we'll talk about the other updates. So, this is a new mode in Aider that provides experimental support for using two models to complete each coding task. In this mode, an architect model is asked to describe how to solve the coding problem, and an editor model is given the architect's solution, then asked to produce specific code editing instructions to apply those changes to existing source files. Basically, it's like adding a planning stage before another model edits the code. For example, if you give it a prompt, it will first go to an architect model, which generates an outline for how to do the task. Then, that outline is passed to the editor model, which writes the code and accomplishes the task. However, it seems this isn't agentic. By agentic, I mean that once the architect provides the outline to the editor, the architect leaves the chat and doesn't review the code or anything like that. So it's just a one-way process. Anyway, if we look at the performance it brings to the table, you can see they've shared benchmarks using different models as the architect and different models as the editor. The previous state of the art was around 80, as you can see on this line. If we look above this line, the best combination seems to be OpenAI's O1 combined with DeepSeek, which is great. They score about 85%. Although this result comes from using the whole edit format, not the diff edit format. If you're wondering what those are, in the diff edit format, the LLM only returns the edited code with the lines to be changed, while in the whole edit format, it returns the entire page of code, which generally uses more tokens. Anyway, in this mode, O1 Preview and DeepSeek Lead, followed by O1 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. This combination scores about 83% in the diff edit format, so it's a solid option for sure. Additionally, DeepSeek and GPT-4.0 score about 80.5% which is also good. Generally, you get better results with an architect model, as seen in these benchmarks. Although this consumes more tokens and can be quite costly, which is an issue for sure. Typically, you get great results with just O1, but sometimes other models can improve things slightly. If we look at what they say about these combinations, You'll see they mention that pairing O1 Preview as Architect with DeepSeek as Editor sets a state-of-the-art benchmark, but it only works that way in the whole edit format. Both steps are quite slow, so it's probably not practical for interactive use with Aider. They also say that pairing OpenAI's O1 Preview with Anthropic Sonnet as the editor produces the second-best result. This is a practical configuration for users who can work with both providers. So, this might be a good approach for people to actually use. They also mention that pairing many models with themselves in the architect-editor configuration can provide significant benefits. Sonnet, GPT-4.0, and GPT-4.0 Mini all scored higher when used as an architect-editor pair. They say DeepSeek is surprisingly effective as an editor model. It seems remarkably capable of turning proposed coding solutions into updated versions of source files. Using the efficient diff editing format, DeepSeek helps all architect models except Sonnet. So that's cool. I would have liked to see a cost comparison, but there's nothing about that. Anyway, 
we'll try it out and see for ourselves. Now, let me also tell you about the other features in this release. It's added new O1 Preview and O1 Mini Shortcuts. There's also a new setting for completion menu colors. There's a new voice format switch to send voice audio as WAV, MP3, or WebM. In addition, there's support for the new Gemini 002 models. It will now follow HTTP redirects when scraping URLs. There are also some model setting changes to make it more compatible with light LLM. The clipboard option has been renamed to Paste. There's also support for light LLM's extra underscore body parameter, as well as support for cursor shapes when in Vim mode. On top of that, there are numerous bug fixes. So, all that's good. Now that's super exciting. So, let's dive in and check everything out. First of all, make sure you've installed Ader's latest development version. The architect mode is currently only available in the development variant. To do that, just run the command you'll find on the optional steps page of Ader, copy it, and run it in your terminal, and the Ader development version will be installed. Once that's done, we can start using it. Using it is a little complex to understand. So, let me explain. Generally, you use Ader by entering a model along with other operators you want to use. Now, there's a new option called Architect. If you add the Architect operator, Ader will automatically set the model you selected as the Architect and choose an editor model based on the Architect model. They have a bunch of built-in defaults they use to select the editor model. But you can override this by adding another operator called Editor Model and specifying the model you want to use. For example, if you want to use O1 Preview as the architect and Claude 3.5 Sonnet as the editor, you'd set O1 Preview as the main model and Claude as the editor like this. Once you've done that, Ader will start and you'll see O1 as the main model and Claude as the editor. Let's ask it to create a simple to-do app. And as you can see, it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit. And it's done. So, you can see here, the architect defined how to do it, and the editor model completed the task, which is great. Let's run it and check. Hmm, this looks pretty good. It's nothing extraordinary, but it's certainly better than a single prompt generation. Although, this will obviously cost more than a single prompt. Personally, I won't be using this option much because it's expensive, but you can surely give it a go. I don't find it very useful. Instead, I prefer going back and forth manually, but it definitely has its strengths. Also, if you're in simple mode and want to switch to architect mode for just one prompt, you can do that too by using the slash architect command in the simple chat interface. For example, Let's start Ader with Claude. Now, here you can see it started in simple mode. If we want to switch to architect mode for just one prompt without converting the whole chat, we just write slash architect, enter the prompt, and it'll use the architect mode for that prompt. So, that's good too. Let's ask it to make a Minesweeper game. You can see it's doing that now.
and it's done. You can see it worked well, and if we run it, it looks and works fine. Apart from that, there are some other cool features. You can now use O1 Preview and O1 Mini with simple shortcuts, which is neat. There's also a new copy command that copies the last LLM response to your clipboard, a useful tool, and the clipboard option is renamed to Paste. You can also use Gemini 1.52 models now. To do that, just set your Gemini API key, and you can easily use the Gemini 1.52 models with it. Let me create a simple application with it as well. Let's ask it to make a finance tracker app. I'm using the free tier here, and I'm using it with Flash. Let's send it and wait. And now it's done. Let's run it. And you can see it works pretty well. So, that's cool too. I mean, what more could we ask for? It works. Plus it's free, so that's awesome. These are the major upgrades. Ader was already good, and now it's even better with these new modes. Ader is definitely moving in a good direction. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.